Good morning. It's your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Isaiah chapter 36. You are expected to follow me along in the scriptures. Okay? We will be reading Isaiah chapter 36 in its entirety. I'm not going to do a total expository video on this, but this is very pertinent, especially at this hour. Okay? So follow me along. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 36, beginning at verse 1 on to the close of the chapter. You can handle this, right? Okay. We begin. Don't look at me. Get in the scriptures, okay? Now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah that Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the defense cities of Judah and took them. And the king of Assyria sent Rabshakeh from Lachish to Jerusalem on to King Hezekiah with a great army. And he stood by the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. <clears throat> so King Sennacherib, okay, king of Assyria, Assyria, successful enemy, okay, sent his emissary Rabshakeh with a great army to intimidate and to subvert the children of Israel. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> then came forth unto him Eliakim, Hilkiah's son, which was over the house, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah, Asaph's son, the recorder. And Rabshakeh said unto them, <clears throat> the people, Say ye now to Hezekiah, Thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? First thing he's doing, first thing he's doing is, Yea, hath God said, putting doubt, planting seeds of doubt. Yea, hath God said? I say, verse 5, sayest thou, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for war. Now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? Lo, <clears throat> thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt. And remember, for our instruction in righteousness, for we today, in the time of the Gentiles, for us to church a living God. Egypt can be likened unto a type of the world. Okay? Okay? So right here, thus far, up in here into verse 6, we see they are doing, yea, hath God said, in verse 4, <clears throat> saying that their words are vain, because I have counsel and strength for war. Okay, verse 5. Now, on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? <clears throat> and already in verse 6, the accusation that these Jews are trusting on Egypt, trusting on the world. Okay? Let's continue in verse 6. Whereon, if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all that trust in him. And remember, Pharaoh can be likened unto a type of Satan. Lucifer, okay? Okay? Now, what's interesting is that these guys, Rabshakeh, was saying that of Pharaoh and Egypt. That if you lean on it, what does it say there? Whereon, if a man lean, it will go into his hand. Note that. Note that. Okay? Now let's continue. <clears throat> 
But if thou say to me, look at that, we trust in the Lord our God. Is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah hath taken away? And said to Judah and Jerusalem, Ye shall worship before this altar. Hezekiah did some cleaning up, okay, in Israel. He did some cleaning up. And what this man, Rabshakeh, is referring to, uh, um, look at that. Uh, we trust in the Lord our God. Is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah hath taken away? He took away the altars of the false little g-gods. And brought the people back onto the worship of the true God during the time of Hezekiah. Okay? Hezekiah was a godly king. He done messed up, but he was a godly king. Okay? But Rabshakeh is attributing to the true God the false idols, the fake. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> now, therefore, give pledges, I pray thee, to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give thee two thousand horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. Hold your place here. Go to Luke. Luke, I believe it is. <clears throat> Luke. Oh, 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 hold on one second. Might have to pause this, brethren. Got to find this. Okay, sorry about that. Had to find this. Okay, let's reread in Isaiah chapter 37, verse 8. Now, therefore, give pledges, I pray thee, to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give thee 2,000 horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. Okay, go to Luke chapter 4. <clears throat> Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, on to verse 13. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taketh him, taking him up into an high mountain. Oh, beg your pardon. Shoot unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Pay attention. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Thou, therefore, wilt worship me. All shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. And look at this, a tactic of the devil. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest that any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. The devil quoted him scripture. Okay? But look at how our Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ, Answers him. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It 
is written. It is written. It is said. Where is it said? In the scriptures. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. <clears throat> Note verses 6 and 7. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all, all shall be thine. Go back to Isaiah. Refreshing our memory in verse 8. Isaiah 36. Now therefore give pledges, I pray thee, to my master, the king of Assyria, successful enemy. And I will give thee two thousand horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders on them. You get it. Let's continue. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's, master's servants, and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots, and for horsemen, the accusation, you say you're trusting on God. Is not God the one who sent me against you? Right? And you noticed already that these guys attributed unto God that which was false. Hmm. Hmm. Isn't that interesting, huh? Let's continue. Case in point. Sorry. Should have let you do the talking. <laughs> Look at verse 10. And am I now come up without the Lord against this land to destroy it? The Lord said unto me, go up against this land and destroy it. Then said Eliakim and Shebna and Joah unto Rabshakeh, Speak, I pray thee, unto thy servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it. And speak not to us in the Jews' language in the ears of the people that are on the wall. These guys did not want their people to hear what Rabshake was saying to create fear. You know, it's a tactic of subversion, by the way. Okay? And look at the reaction. But Rabshake said... Hath my master sent me to thy master and to thee to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to the men that sit upon the wall that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and said, Hear ye the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you. Is that not a tactic of all the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ against uh, those of us who stand upon the word, the scriptures, and have trust on our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and fear him? Hmm? Is this not the type of an attack that comes against us? Huh? Thus saith the king, let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you. And that's partly true, yes. Yes. Hezekiah was not the one who was going to deliver him. Deliver them. Well, not getting ahead of ourselves. Let's continue. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord. <laughs> saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. The city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by a present. If, if therefore thou shalt worship me, all shall be thine. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, and eat ye every one of his vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one the waters of his own cistern, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land. An imitation. An imitation. Look at that. Until I come and take you away to a land 
like your own land. <clears throat> Repentance isn't required. Brokenness isn't required. Contrition, sorrow isn't required. Don't call on the name of the Lord. Don't pray. No. If thou wilt worship me, all will be thine. And I'm going to take you away to a land like your own. Give you a Christianity that is agreeable to your flesh. You tell me, is that, is that not what the enemy right now is preaching? <clears throat> Let's continue. Let's reread this. Until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards. <laughs> Beware, lest Hezekiah persuade you, <laughs> saying, the Lord will deliver us. Hath any of the gods of the nations delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? <laughs> Where are the gods of Hamath, of Arphad? And incidentally, uh, look at verse 18, where it says, Hath any of the, little g, gods, of course, but we know that. And look at this in verse 19. Where are the little g gods of Hamath, of Arphad? Where are the gods of Sepharvim? And have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Will Satan fight against Satan or uh, his kingdom will not stand? If Satan be divided, his kingdom cannot stand? They may, uh, the devil and his angels may make you want to trick you into thinking that they are divided. No, 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 no. They all serve one purpose. To take you away. To deceive you. Who are they among all the gods of these lands that have delivered their land out of my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? Now look at this. But they held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was saying, Answer him not. When persecution comes against you, when subversion, fear tactics, fear mongering, when it comes to you, are you wasting your time answering those who have no desire to hear the truth of God's word? They'll go to any means to justify themselves. Look at that. Look, did you not just read that with me? Huh? Verse 18, on to verse 20. Beware lest Hezekiah persuade you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Hath any of the gods of the nations delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? <clears throat> Where are the gods of Hamath and Arphad? Where are the gods of Sepharvim? And have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who are they among all the gods of these lands that have delivered their land out of my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? But they held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was saying, Answer him not. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, that was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, to Hezekiah, with their clothes rent and told him the words of Rabshakeh. Very quickly, very quickly, go to Nehemiah. Go to Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4. In the book of ne Nehemiah, you will see in two chapters specifically, here in chapter 4 and also in chapter 6, examples of manipulation. Control tactics. Okay? Nehemiah chapter 4, <clears throat> verses 1 under verse 15. 
Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 15. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, doing work for the Lord, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews, our instruction in righteousness. You're doing a work for the Lord. The Lord is working through you. And the enemies of our Lord are wroth and have indignation, great indignation, and mock you. <laughs> Let's continue. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they re revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? What are these, what are these King James Scripture believers doing? Hmm? What are these people of the Church of the Living God? What are, what, what are they going to do? Huh? Huh? Who are they? Now, Tobijah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Look at the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they attack people. Okay? Especially look at the attacks that come upon the beloved preacher Aaron Darren. Okay? Look at that as an example and balance it off with this so far. And you tell me what you see. Hear, O our God. Now, look at verse 4. Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Hear, O our God. Okay? Verses, from verses 1 on to verse 3, okay, is persecution. Affliction, attack. Look at verse 4. This is, <laughs> look at verse 4. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Make them manifest. Make them manifest. Reward their, their doings upon their own head. But it begins with, hear, O our God. You notice that? Let's continue. So built we the wall. So built we the wall. And all the wall was joined together onto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. For the people had a mind to work. Those of us of the Church of the Living God, we have the same spirit, the same mind, the mind of Christ, okay? We fulfill different things within the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God, okay? But as my brother says, uh, muddled streams run together? <laughs> because those of us who are truly saved, born again, converted, have the same one God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within us. So built we the wall. Well, it ain't going to stop us. Might sidetrack us. Might hinder us. Might put something there in front of us to make us go, ha, ha, ha. But you ain't going to stop us. You think you're going to stop the Lord, huh? Yeah, yeah. And all the wall was joined together onto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass when Sanbalat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped. Then were they very wroth. 
Brethren, you, you really want to get back? You really want to confound these enemies? Look at verse 4 again. Hear, O our God. Verse 6. So built we the wall. Continue in the work of the Lord that he has called you on to. Keep going. Keep at it. Because, see, the enemy, <laughs> they want to get under your skin. They want to divert you. They want to stop you. They want to get to you. And I've seen comments on uh, some of these devil's channels where they're saying, quote, we're getting to him. That's what they want. They want to stop you. They have God said, remember, they want to stop you. What are you going to do about that? And let's continue in verse 8. And conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Isn't it interesting that all these enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you look at them and you look at their tactics and you look at them, you'll start seeing the dots being connected. This one's linked to this one. This one's linked to that one. This one is doing this one with this one. Like a big spider web. Sticky. Many anchors. They're all working together. To get one thing done. To cast out. To hinder the work of our Lord as if they could. But let's see what thing they can do. And see, if you take your eyes... And your attention away from the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You know, if you raise that shield down. Now see, you do have to raise down the shield so you can see the battlefield. But then once you see the battlefield, put it up. Because if you leave it down too long. See what I'm saying? Let's continue. Look at verse 9. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Oh, they took the threat seriously, but what did they do? Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God, number one, and set a watch against them day and night because of them. They went to God first. And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burden is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversary said, Okay, and, and think about this with the enemies of our Lord. And our adversary said, They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them, and slay them, and cause the work to cease. That's what they want. They want to stop you. No matter the size of the work that the Lord has called you to. Tracting stuff online. Okay? Whatever it is. That's what they want to do. They want to stop you. Look at that. And our adversary said, They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them, and slay them, and cause the work to cease. To distract you, to waste your time. Verse 12, And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, from all places whence ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Fear, fear, fear. Therefore, I set in the lower places behind the wall, and on the higher places. 
I even set of the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked up and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, <laughs> Be not ye, be not ye afraid of them. Be not ye, ye is plural, afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren. Your sons and your daughters and your houses, and your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to naught, that we returned all of us to the wall, everyone unto his work. Any acknowledgement to these evil devils is a victory for them. Any infinitesimal amount of your time that you dedicate to the Lord, anything that they can take away from you to turn your attention onto them is a victory for them. Are you aware of that? the slightest infinitesimal thing that they can divert you away from having your full attention on the Lord and diverting it onto them, they have won a victory. Is that what you want? Huh? Of course we're not perfect. Come on. I know that. But especially right now, you need to get that in your mind, man. Especially now that the vaccine is now being pushed out. Where's your focus? And who is your focus upon? Go back now to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 37. We will be reading verses 1 under verse 20. Now, we read Isaiah chapter 37. We looked in the Hamiah. All this persecution, this trickery, the conspiracy, they conspired, the attacks, all of it. Let's read in Isaiah chapter 37 now. Pay close attention to what King Hezekiah does. And it came to pass, when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth, humbled himself, and went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth, unto Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. And they say, and they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble, and of rebuke, and of blasphemy, for the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. It may be the Lord thy God will hear the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach the living God, and will reprove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that is left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. <clears throat> and Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say unto your master, Thus saith the Lord, 
Okay, now look, now watch this. Be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard. Be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard. Whereof the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor, and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword of his by the sword in his own land. Now watch this. So Rabshakeh, the one emissary guy who was saying all this, uh, being sent out by Sennacherib, okay? So Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna. Okay? Warring against Libna. For he had heard that he was departed from Lachish. And he heard, and he heard saying concerning Trihaka, king of Ethiopia, he has come forth to make war with thee. Okay? Now, look at this. And when he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah. Saying, note that, you see that? Okay? The king of Syria, going against the law, that was having this stuff going on, warring against Libna, and he heard say concerning Trihaka, king of Ethiopia, he has come forth to make war with thee, and yet he still sends people to Hezekiah under that adversity. He's still going after them. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Let's continue. Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God in whom thou trustest deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Saying the same thing <laughs> as he did previously. <laughs> Harping on the one thing trying to poke, trying to get at you. <laughs> you see that? Let's continue. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly, and shalt thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them, which my fathers have destroyed, as Gozan, and Haran, and Reseph, and the children of Eden, which were in Telassar? Where is the king of Hamath, and the king of Arphad, and the king of the city of Severvam, Hena, and Iva? Again, repeating the same thing. Repeating the same thing. <laughs> the same old attack. Hoping to divert anyone from the truth. And what's the truth here in the context? That the Lord is going to deliver these people. They take your attention. They want to take your attention away from the Lord and have it focused on them. And Hezekiah received the letters from the hand of the messengers and read it. Okay? And Hezekiah went up unto the house of the Lord. First thing he did. Okay? Look at verse 1 there. Okay? What did he do first? He humbled himself, yes. But what did he do first? And went into the house of the Lord. Did he go to man? Hmm? Did he give himself over to the distractions? No. He went immediately on to the Lord. Right here, after Rabshakeh returned, spewing the same old garbage, what did Hezekiah do? And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up on to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Put it at the Lord's feet. Because through manipulation, of course, and fear tactics, fear mongering, 
They couldn't do this. They put it at the feet of the Lord. Look at that. And spread it before the Lord. You with me? And Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord, saying, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel that dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, one God, even thou alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Incline thine ear, O Lord, and hear, open thine eyes, O Lord, and see, and hear all the words of Sennacherib, which has sent to reproach the living God. That's what all the enemies of our Lord do. They reproach the living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Well, say, they are of us. <laughs> of a truth, Lord, Kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their countries and have cast their little g gods into the fire. For they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, gods of their own making. Wood and stone, therefore, they have destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only. And if we were to continue reading, which we are not going to do, you will see the deliverance that the Lord um, brings about. By an angel of the Lord, okay, who, um, who I do believe sends out and kills a whole bunch of them, the angel of the Lord, who goes out in verse 36, a hundred and four score and five thousand, the angel of the Lord went forth. So yes, the Lord delivers them. But see, the point that I'm trying to get across to you, let me hear. Go to Luke now, chapter 10. Luke, chapter 10. Luke, chapter 10. We will be reading verses 38 on to verse 42 in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 on to verse 42. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus feet and heard his word. He spread it before the Lord. Like we read. Oh, hear, oh, hear, oh, our God. We made our prayer unto our God. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. She was doing the work and wanted the Lord to help her uh, and to have Mary to help her doing the work. Okay? Was covered about much serving. Look at how he responds. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. What is that one good thing? Which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Hmm. 
Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Come on, fingers, work with me. Matthew chapter 11, verses 20 on to verse 30. Matthew chapter 11, verses 20 on to verse 30. Then began he to abrade the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shalt be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. And a babe, a baby, is dependent on who? Their father? Their mother? Dependent. You know, a lot of you will say, yeah, I'm dependent on the Lord. But how are you? Are you? Yeah, I trust the Lord, but... Yeah, I trust the Lord, but I gotta get the vaccine in order that I can still work. Whereas a babe is incapable of doing anything their own, but being dependent on the one who gives them strength to do anything. You get what I'm saying to you. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the, the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. When you get right down to it, brethren, When you get right down to it, where do you go? Where do you go when things start going foul against you? Where do you go when these devils attack? Do you go to the Lord first? Do you learn of him? For knowing that he is meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Where do you go when trouble arises? And also, too, remember, the Lord can be allowing things to happen to you because you're out of fellowship with him. You know, you go ahead on your own time, read Amos chapter 4, a 
about all the things that the Lord brought upon the children of Israel, and yet they would not turn on to him. And very quickly, one verse in Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, this is something to consider. But the overall point that I'm trying to impress upon you is where do you go? Do you go to men or do you go to the Lord? Hmm? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 13. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. When you're doing the work of the Lord and you are attacked for standing for the scriptures and the truth of God's word, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, like I said, and like we have already given example, that these enemies will do whatever they can. They will conspire to draw your attention away from the Lord and have it put upon them. But then again, there are some out there who are out of fellowship, living in sin. And the Lord might be using those circumstances to get your attention that you may be brought unto repentance and confess your sins and get right with Him. Because if you ain't right with Him, how in the wide world of sports entertainment are you expecting to be made right with the brethren? If you are not right with him first, in the beginning, God, remember? What's the first thing you do, man? Woman, when trouble arises. Do you go to the Lord first and foremost? Well, Brad, that's just not logical. That, that's not feasible in all situations. I don't give me that. Bunch of bologna sandwiches, man. Some of you out there who won't do that, of the church of the living God, maybe it's because you're afraid of what the Lord's going to say to you. I don't know. But it's a very telling thing. What do you do? Who do you go to first? It's a very telling thing. Hmm? And there are those out there who say, well, I know God. I covered that kind of in the last video. They know God. Up here in their head. But see that 18 inches doesn't go down to their heart. And yes, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Yes, it is. God knows our hearts. Yes, he does. But see, a broken heart, a contrite spirit, is a heart that belongs unto the Lord. And true brokenness of heart and godly sorrow for what you have done unto the Lord those are treasures unto our Lord. Go to Galatians. Go to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 4. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 9. Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 9. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing but from at. Beg your pardon. <laughs> Let's, let me try that again. Sorry. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant. Though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, 
God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, made under the law. That tells us that the law was still binding while our Lord Jesus Christ was on the earth until he paid for the penalty for, of our sins by his death, burial, and resurrection and the blood that he shed on the cross. Okay? To redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And what is the and what was the purpose of the law? Go to Galatians chapter three. Go to Galatians chapter three, verse nineteen, on to on to the close of the chapter. Galatians chapter three, verse nineteen, on to the close of the chapter. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Spirit, soul, and body. One God. Okay? And of course, you can reference that in 1 Timothy. Okay? Actually, hold your place there. First Timothy. Oh, 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 oh. First Timothy. First Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Verse 6 who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Okay? Let's go back to Galatians chapter 3, verse 22, uh, 21. Is the, law then, is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were cut under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, for ye are all the for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Okay? There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed according to the promise. Okay, now this is talking salvifically. As pertaining to salvation, that's what that means. Okay, not culturally, a totally different thing. Okay, that's what the law was there for. Now let's go back to Galatians chapter 4. Reading, rereading verses 4 and 5, and to continue on to verse 9. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then heir of God through Christ. Howbeit then, when ye knew not God, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. Okay? But now, after that ye have known God, 
or rather known of God. What does that mean? Some people know God up here, but does it transcend? The knowing here is of a personal relationship. Were you not following me along when we were reading in Matthew chapter 11? Come unto me, learn of me, okay? Relationship yourself with the living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. How, how, are, you, how are you supposed to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, if you don't speak unto him? Pray, you know? Pray unto him. Neglect the scriptures. You afraid of something? The known here, the known here in verse 9. But now after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, because God knows, knows everybody, right? But the know there is a relationship between a father and a son. Heirs. Okay? Then, uh, okay, look at verse 7. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. The relationship. But now, verse 9. But now after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Now this is referring about going back under the law. But look at this. How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire to again to be in bondage? Why are you giving the enemy a moment of your time? If he is indeed your enemy, excuse me, our Lord's enemy. Because all they want to do is distract you. Take your focus away from the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. When things are going crazy around you, when people set you aside, what do you do? What do you do? Who do you go to? Hmm? Hmm? Go to John chapter 5. One verse. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. One verse. Verse 44. John chapter 5. Verse 44. One verse. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and not seek the honor that cometh from God only? Hmm? Do you go to men? Do you go to man? Or do you go to the Lord first? What do you do? What about you, Brad? <laughs> uh, you want me to tell you all about how bad my knees are getting because of all the time I spend in prayer with the Lord? Huh? Huh? Forgive me that foolishness for saying that. Please forgive me for that. <laughs> After a while, brethren, sisters, you learn that the only chance you ever have in any situation is you take it to the Lord first. And here's a and here's a thought. How about you wait for him to respond? Why don't you wait for him? Well, I, I, some of you want it just like this. We want it now, right? Got to have it right now. Not willing to wait on the Lord. Yeah, okay, let's say you go first to the Lord. You lay it down, right? And then a couple minutes later, well, he hasn't answered. Well, I'm going to do it. You're missing it. 
brother, sister. Okay? Or, when things are going to fall, do you go to men? How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Hmm? And John chapter 12, John chapter 12, verses 37 under verse 45. John chapter 12, verses 37 under verse 45. John chapter 12, verses 37 on the verse 45. Uh, on the verse 43, excuse me. <laughs> 43. But though they, but though he, Jesus, had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? Or to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes, and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory, and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Aha! There, there it is. There it is. There it is. You like the praises of men more than the praises of God? You like to be one of the boys? Hey, man, hey, man, brother. Yeah. Or do you want the praises, the praise of God? Well done, thou good, faithful servant. If what you call your faith is centered on appealing to man, pleasing men, it, it, it's, um, it's pretty safe to say that you have some issues. <laughs> pretty safe to say that. Pretty safe to say that. What do you go to first? Hmm? Turn now to Psalm 88. Last night, a brother and I had a very um, detailed study on this psalm. Um, not, it's not going to be that detailed in this. We're just going to uh, look through this psalm, Psalm 88, okay? Okay? And we're, I want you to consider some things, okay? I want you to consider some things, and we're going to end this video here. But um, please take to consideration, who do you go to first? Let's read Psalm 88. O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee, acknowledging that the Lord is his salvation. Let my prayer come before thee, incline thine ear unto my cry, for my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit, Counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength. Who are those that go down to the pit? People who are lost. I am counted with them that go down to the, into the pit. Free among the dead. 
like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more. And they are cut off from thy hand. Hold your place here and go to Romans chapter 6. Hold your place here. Romans chapter 6. Come on. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. <clears throat> Romans chapter 6. Verses 19 on to verse 23. Romans chapter 6, verses 19 on verse 23. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. And don't, don't, don't you even say that I'm talking about sinless perfection, you twit. Not talking to you, the Church of the Living God. Uh, I have several videos against sinless perfection. Thank you. So I'm not even going to get off on that. But let's continue. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Look at that. Look at that verse. Okay. Uh, where, where was that? Uh, verse 20. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Go back to Psalm 88, verse 5. Free among the dead. Like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Ephesians chapter 2. Free among the dead. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1. On to verse 3. And you hath he quickened, who were dead, who were dead in trespasses and sins. The dead, they are dead because they are in trespasses and sins. You're dead. Free among the dead? In verse 5, you see that? Freed from, free from righteousness? Free among the dead, who are the dead, who are trust, or who are dead in trespasses and sins. Now Paul's talking about this, you know, affirming these people. You were once this, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the little g god Satan. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, who disobey the truth. Not saved people who mess up. No. Children of disobedience are lost people. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Free among the dead. Verse 6 Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness and deeps. Being cut off. Thy wrath. Oh. Okay. Verse 1. He's acknowledging, oh my God. Oh, oh Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. And right here, he's acknowledging, thy wrath lieth hard upon me. And thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves. Shelah. Afflicted all thy waves thou hast put my thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me 
Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up. I cannot come forth. Has God cornered you? Stripped away everything off that flank? And made it so it's just got to be you and him? Huh? What are you going to do with that? Remember, even though the Lord will shave this away and make it so you got to deal with either him between you and him alone, or are you going to revert back to the things of the world and be distracted? When things are going rough, what do you do? Verse 9, mine, oh, mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou shew wonders to the dead? Now note this. Wilt thou shew wonders to the dead? Please, Lord, don't kill me. Shall the dead arise and praise thee, Shelah? <laughs> Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave? Lord, please don't kill me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark? Lord, please don't kill me. Have mercy upon me. Please save me. Forgive me. So that I may go forth and tell the world of what mercy you, Lord Jesus Christ, God my Father, hath had upon me. Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave, or thy faithfulness and destruction? Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave, or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark, and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But unto thee have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? Help could not come to this individual soon enough, but it, see, it's in the Lord's timing. And look at it where it says, my prayer prevent thee. If the, what is it saying in Ezekiel chapter 18, where if the man turn, I will turn from the uh, what I was going to do from him. That's a gross paraphrase, beg your pardon. But going to the Lord in prayer, in brokenness and contrition. You tell me, was this individual broken and contrite? Yeah. Now, as we're going to finish this psalm, you're going to notice that there is no mention of a specific sin in here. But this is dealing with the affliction of the soul. And you got to remember, dispensationally, doctrinally, this was during a time where soul and body were connected. That circumcision made without hands was not there. You have to remember that. Very key to remember that. But the sorrow... Of this individual is to be noted and what is he doing he's seeking the Lord relentlessly how about you verse 15 I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up while I suffer thy terrors I am distracted Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They can pass me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me, and mine acquaintance into darkness. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. 
Psalm 119, Teth. Psalm 119, Teth. Uh, that's verses 65 on to verse 72. We'll end it on this. Psalm 119, Teth, verses 65 on to verse 72. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, <laughs> but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Oh, we got to. Romans chapter 8. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Isn't that what you were thinking, right? Romans chapter 8. What verse? You know. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. The enemy wants to distract you. Take your focus off of what it ought to be upon our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and get there, get your attention on them. Look at me, look at me. Oh, I'm doing all this against you. I'm going to make your life miserable, blah, 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 blah. See, to take your attention away. But there again, the, another facet that a lot of you have to keep in mind, what if the Lord is allowing this to happen because you're out of fellowship, because you're in sin? Maybe you aren't what you think you are, and the Lord is cornering you. What are you going to do with that? Is the Lord truly the First thing in your life. When you roll out of your bed, what's the first thing you do? In the beginning, God. When faced with the decision, do you go to men? When faced with attacks, do you go to men? Do you waste your time here? Do you give in to the distractions or do you shut it all off and get to that place where it's just you and the Lord? It could be scary, can it? But those of us of the church and the living God, especially right now today, well, <laughs> we need it. just got a notification. Brethren, sisters, please consider these things. Because the vaccine is now available here in America, which they are always had, I'm not convinced of that, but it's beginning. What are you going to do? 
who are you going to go to? No, oh, I'm going to go to the Lord, but I love you. Shut up with that. That that kind of thinking. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, I trust the Lord. Yeah, I go to him, but I guess just shut up. Get your butt out the way. This brethren, it's going to get to the point very soon. The only one we have is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. What do you have? Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Lord willing, I might have another video coming today. Uh, very quickly, I want to address this. Um, uh, mere words I cannot say unto you, my brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God, for the thanks, gratitude, and just the love that we have for our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, for ye, our brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God, who have helped us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And there are many of you out there who have contacted me with questions and requests. Um, I'm learning how to deal to deal with lots of emails and looking at them. Um, if you have sent me an email and I have not responded, please do not take offense. Um, I actually get a few. <laughs> I get a few. Um, for example, there are uh, a brother um, has asked me to do a, a video on Christmas, which is coming, and also a, a video on uh, an expository video. And also a brother has asked me to do um, uh, a video on pragmatism, which is very interesting. Um, and several others out there, you know, those are just examples. Um, I have not ignored you. If I have not responded to you, please forgive me. Um, trying to keep track of everything is quite challenging. <laughs> but um, thank you. Thank you so much. We love you. And I love you, Church of the Living God. And uh, may our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be glorified. Thank you so much for watching if you do. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Come on.